ordinary speaker. We take it for granted, but speakers are such an important device that they are intertwined into our daily lives and we usually don't even think about it. We expect them to produce sound for all of our devices. Cell phones, car stereos, headphones, TVs, clock radios, movie theaters, and more. They are everywhere. But how do they work? In order to convert an electrical signal into an audible sound, speakers contain an electromagnet a metal coil which creates a magnetic field when electric current flows through it. This coil behaves much like a regular permanent magnet with one fascinating action. Reversing the direction of the current in the coil flips the poles of the magnet. This electromagnet is placed in front of a permanent non-moving magnet. The permanent magnet is fixed firmly into position unlike the electromagnetic which moves. As pulses of electricity pass through the coil of the electromagnet, the direction of its magnetic field is rapidly changed. This means that it is in turn attracted to and repelled from the permanent magnet, just like when you hold two magnets together with similar poles facing each other. This causes a vibrating back and forth. If you look closely at a speaker, you can see the diaphragm covering the cone move, pushing air as it pulses back and forth. The cone is made of a flexible material, usually paper, plastic, or metal, which amplifies these vibrations, pumping sound waves into the surrounding air and right at your ears. This is called Faraday's Law, named after Michael Faraday, an English scientist who discovered it way back in the 1800s. Alexander Graham Bell patented his first electric loudspeaker, capable of reproducing intelligible speech, as part of his telephone in 1876, which was followed in 1877 by an improved version from Ernst Siemens. Nikola Tesla reportedly made a similar device in 1881, but he was not issued a patent. So speakers are really pretty basic with only three important components. The cone, which is connected to the basket or chassis, the electromagnet or coil, and the permanent magnet. The material surrounding the cone is the surround, and it can be made out of rubber or polyester foam, or a ring of corrugated resin-coated fabric. It's attached to both the outer diaphragm circumference and to the frame or chassis. These different surround materials, their shape and finish, can dramatically affect the sound of a speaker. While polyester foam is lightweight and economical, it can be degraded by exposure to ozone, UV light, humidity, and elevated temperatures, limiting its useful life to about 15 years. The frequency of the vibrations determines the pitch of the sound produced, and their amplitude affects the volume. That's why when you turn your stereo up high enough, you can see the diaphragm covering the cone move. This is the general principle for what are called dynamic speakers, the most common type of speaker. To reproduce all the different frequencies of sound in a piece of music faithfully, high quality speakers typically use different sized cones dedicated to high, medium, and low frequencies, or tweeters which reproduce high frequencies, mid-range, and woofers which produce low frequencies. Just about all speaker applications use some type of enclosure. The enclosure provides not only a place to physically mount the speakers, but it also prevents sound waves coming back from the back of a speaker from interfering with those from the front, which can cause distortion. So that's how the ordinary speaker works to bring sound to your ears. If you missed any of my other Kip K tips, click the end cards on the screen to check those videos out. More Kip K tips next week. Thanks for watching.